The fight to keep Connecticut's ferries on the water takes a hit from a Superior Court judge. Also, will you feel Connecticut's income tax hike? And if so, can you bear it? We hear from some who say no increase is easy, no matter how small. Also, housing experts say Connecticut leaders need to change their ideas of what housing looks like in order to give safe, affordable housing for all. Hi, this is The Real Story. I'm Lori Perez. Connecticut is waiting and watching to see whether or not the state workers' unions ratify a deal that could save thousands of jobs and prevent sweeping cuts to services. One of the most talked about cuts is Governor Malloy's plan to close Connecticut's two ferries, one from Rocky Hill to Glastonbury, the other from Chester to Headline. Groups from Lyme and Rocky Hill went to court to stop the closings, but Thursday a Superior Court judge dismissed the lawsuit that was filed by Lyme. Here now to talk about where the fight for the ferries goes from here are Rocky Hill Mayor Anthony LaRosa and Town Manager Barbara Gilbert. Thanks you both for being here. Very I guess if welcome. we could start off because it's kind of a technical um, issue, but you told me that basically today the judge dismissed the Lyme lawsuit but suggested a way that you all in Rocky Hill might be able to file one um, that might be more successful. Correct. What we did was we were attaching ourselves to the Lyme lawsuit and if he had done them individually, he would have found that we had, we had standing to bring our lawsuit, but he didn't. He went to Lyme first, and they did not have standing. So once their lawsuit was dismissed and we were attached to their lawsuit, ours went away. Right. But basically what he said to us is that we do have standing as far as because Rocky Hill, the Rocky Hill Ferry is a historical district that crosses the river to Glastonbury. And being part of a historical district, that makes a huge difference. We're registered with the uh, National Park Service mm -hmm. as a historical district, and that's... So the other ferry is not is not registered. It's in not that registered. Way. That's correct. Okay, so that could give a little more gravitas the, to your argument. Or? Theirs was basically a scenic road issue in which the commissioner of the DOT has issued a uh, an article or what have you stating stating that they're going to de they're going to stop that road from going across the river. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a, a little bit of history about this, if you want to know. The Rocky Hill, the Rocky Hill Ferry was founded in 1649. Wow. And in 1893, it was taken over by the town of Rocky Hill and Glastonbury. And here's the ir irony of the whole thing. It was very lucrative. Oh. It made a lot of money back then. And then it was taken over by the state because it was so lucrative in 1915. It's not lucrative now, though, right? It no, it it's make, not. It doesn't make any money? Uh, they make some money, but it costs to run both ferries. It's around four hundred thousand dollars a year, between four and five hundred thousand dollars a year. So, is is the basis of your argument to keep it that that it is a, of historical importance? Um, yes, it's part of the National Historic Register, and by statute, you cannot demolish, destroy, or remove anything that's on that National Historic Register without seeking permission to do it. Mm -hmm. The Attorney General, in other cases where it was, would not be the state, would become involved, and he would be the advocate. Because he's representing DOT, the town is required to go and have their own advocate through the town attorney. So, um, you know, I'm all for protecting historical things, but what if they were to say, well, we're just going to put this on, on hold for now. I mean, obviously we're in a very tough economic time. You know, at a time when people don't want to see cuts in services or layoffs to critical services, and, and I don't know, I mean, uh, do people have a point that... It, I don't know, spending a million dollars on a f historical ferry maybe well, might not be the best. Well, it's not a million dollars. It's less than a million dollars. But they're going to spend $175 million on a busway that nobody wants. Mm -hmm. well, you're talking some about, people want it. Yeah, okay, I understand <laughs> that. But I'm just saying this is something that's part of our history. Mm -hmm. You don't give up your history. It's the oldest running ferry in the nation. Oh, wow. Uh, it's, it's been running since, like I said, like I said since continuously since 19, uh, 1649. And that makes it the oldest running ferry in the country and that is part of the history. What sorts of alternatives do you have? Could, for instance, could they, um, could they charge more? Or That's what's happened. When the last time they had a problem, they shortened the hours and increased the prices. Mm -hmm. And by shortening the hours, they lost all the commuters because they, they don't start till 1030 and they, st and, they, and they stop at 5 o'clock. Right, so that might be even making the problem even worse. That's correct, yeah. exactly. So if they lengthen the hours, they, w they were making more money before. And mm -hmm. then, when you, and then you, increase the, uh, you increase the the cost and people aren't using it as much. And not only that, there are a lot of cyclists out there that use it yeah. to go back and forth to work. There was one at a meeting in Glastonbury, a cyclist that comes up through 
think she comes up through Middletown all the way up into Glastonbury, but she goes across the ferry. Uh -huh. And she cycles it every day. Once that changes, she's going to have to drive because she can't go up and over the bridges. So how many um, people use it when, when it is being... It service. runs pretty much continuously. Usually we have a line. We've actually, because it's Route 160 and it's nationally renowned, um, we've actually in the wintertime found people who, after it's been taken out of the water, because it does not run all mm -hmm. year, from other states who've come here oh. for the winter yeah. looking to cross the ferry. Um, a lot of the individuals who live in South Glastonbury liked it because they didn't have to go up to the Putnam Bridge, yeah. which is soon to be under construction, mm -hmm. nor did they have to go down to the Aragoni Bridge, which is under construction currently. Um, I had employees who would go back and forth. They would sell monthly books of tickets. Mm -hmm. They didn't use them all. They would expire on them, so it was a very lucrative way of increasing by selling books. Um, in addition to that, the workers, the cost, if CBAC agrees to its, um, the concessions, uh, the savings will not be the full amount because the workers are DOT workers who, when they're not running the ferry, go back and plow snow and do oh. other things. So there will not be the savings on the salaries, the benefits, the health insurance. The savings will be the fuel and any repairs that may need to be made to the ferries. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're and saying. And so the cost of the employees should be removed in many ways from the overall picture because they are DOT employees. So you're saying they'll, they'll still have their jobs, but it'll just if, be in a different... If CBAC agrees right. and the pink slips are revoked, those employees still keep their jobs. Mm -hmm. The ferry doesn't run, but that savings right. from the employees, which right. is part of the 400 some odd thousand dollars that component doesn't go away. So you all have to be acting quickly now um, at this right. point to make a decision because you were telling me that they're planning on pulling the ferries out ne next week or this week? Um, the, the 12th. The 12th, okay. is, they're going to pull them out, but they're supposed to stop. But they, they're keeping the employees to, I think, the 22nd or something like that. Right now, yeah. Yeah, and, but we ha we're having a meeting Monday evening uh, to have a decision because it wasn't unanimous on our council to to get into, enter this lawsuit, mm -hmm. so we have to make sure we have a meeting, and hopefully we can convince them. And it will be an executive session, but there will be public comment before we go into executive session, because our attorney doesn't want to give away any strategies that we might want right. to use, so we'll do that in executive session. Now, do you need to have consent from the, from the council, or? Yes, because we're spending the taxpayers' dollars. Right, so you have to have uh, majority consent, or unanimous? We have or? to have at least five votes. Five votes, It's a nine-member council. So the vote, um, we're running out of time here, so the, so the meeting is Monday night at what time? At 7 o'clock. Yeah. 7 o'clock at, at Rocky Hill Town Hall. Also, the state will be holding an informational forum at the Rocky Hill Town Hall on August 22nd from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., and I promised them I would put that in. All right. Well, that's good information, and because I, I know a lot of people are very interested yeah. in it, yeah. you know, from all points, and we appreciate you guys coming by today to talk and about it. And if they it. come to our meeting, it'll be, a lot of people would help. No, I know. I know. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Coming up, um, thanks, uh, of course, again to both uh, Mayor Anthony LaRosa and Town Manager Barbara Gilbert. Coming up, are you ready for Connecticut's income tax hike? Governor Malloy says those who will feel it the most should be able to handle it. We're going to hear from Republicans who don't exactly see it that way. Just stay with me.